All right, so you're wondering what the most expensive cities in the Tampa Bay area are to live in? Well, in today's video, we're gonna find out where the other half lives. I'm so excited to bring this to you guys. This has been a request in our comments and I wanted to get to it. We're starting an entire series around really fun things in the area, like these quirky things to know, like what's the, the most expensive place to live? And in today's video, I'm really, really fired up about this. I think some of these are gonna surprise you. Others are gonna be, yep, that kind of makes sense, right? But I can't wait to take you around town. Why? Because I know a lot of the times when I was growing up as a kid, I always wondered, where are the rich people live? And then when I found out where they live, I'm like, how do they live there, right? And I really wanted to see behind the curtain. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go check it out. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Juan Alcala and I'm a licensed real estate professional. I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. And hey, we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a new video like this. Now, I wanna get into this list and talk about why this is gonna be fun. Um, I don't know about you, I'm gonna date myself a little bit here, but there used to be this show on when I was a kid. It was called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Um, I think there was a song written about it later in the 2000s, but it had this guy by the name of Robin Leach and he had this big accents and he used to start the show with, you know, this this uh, intro and it was like, welcome to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I'm not even gonna do the accent, so don't ask me. <laughs> but welcome to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And, you know, they would take you around to the wealthiest people in the world's home and show you their yachts. And I just remember seeing that stuff and going, wow, like how incredible, because I was a little broke baby. I didn't know anything about you know money or what that looked like and then as I got a little bit older and you know got uh, you know in, into my teens along comes um, you know MTV Cribs and we got to see behind the curtain of celebrities and what their homes look like and I always thought it was really fascinating and as you get a little bit older and you buy your first home you start to recognize really quickly there's the haves and the have-nots right and my mom used to call it all the time that's how the other half lives and it just made me laugh and in today's video we are going to check that out we're gonna go see the 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 ten most most expensive cities to live in the Tampa Bay area. And this list is actually going to be pretty fun because again, I think there's going to be some things that might surprise you. Others are not going to be a surprise, but you may not know these areas. So I can't wait to share them with you. It's going to be fun. So let's go check them out. So the first thing I want to do is give a little bit of context on geography. Okay. Tampa Bay is an area made up of about 3.2 million people. Um, it makes up three counties. You're talking about Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa is actually located. You've got Pinellas County, which is located to the west. Those are where the Gulf Coast beaches are, areas like Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach. And then to the north, you have Pasco County, which last year was one of the fastest growing counties in the United States, and it has been absolutely booming. And we're gonna start out in Pasco County, and we're gonna jump right into an area called Odessa. And I've made an entire video about this area. We'll link it up top here and in the description below so you can go check it out. Um, really nice area, but what's unique about this is recently and when I mean recently I mean not too long ago Odessa was really kind of like the boonies so to speak <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot out there you know it's to the north of Tampa it's about 30 to 35 minutes depending on where you live with traffic can be as much as 45 to 50 without it you can might be able to get downtown in about 30 minutes as well but there wasn't a whole lot of homes in this community even five years ago there was very little out there it was quote unquote the boonies and you'll get comments you know I made when I made the video if you go check it out you'll see in the comments you know that's the sinkhole capital of Florida and and it's the boondocks there's nothing out there and it just goes to show you how much it's changed because that probably was true at one point but right now Odessa is absolutely booming to buy a home in Odessa Florida at the time of this recording is seven hundred thousand dollars on average 706 as a matter of fact it's up 26.7 percent year over year in real estate values and 81.9 percent <laughs> in the last three alone. Well, why? Because they have really started building. There's all these new beautiful developments out there. They've got shopping. They've gone with the whole mindset of build it and they will come. And man, are they coming. There's no doubt about it. All right, number nine on this list. We're gonna jump over to Pinellas County, head a little bit south and over to the Indian Shores area. Now, Gulf Coast beaches, 
intercoastal waterway. Of course, those things make sense. This is where I would expect to find the most expensive areas to live, or I'm sorry, cities to live in the Tampa Bay area. And Indian Shores is on that list. And the average home there right now is $743,000 to get in there. It's up 30% year over year, even with declining real estate values that we're starting to see across the country and 86.6% .6 over the last three. It is absolutely booming. And it just makes sense, right? You've got Gulf Coast beaches, intercoastal waterways where you're able to own a home with a boat slip and if you've got a boat or you're, you, you know you're an angler or maybe you just want to, to get out because you love being on the water on a boat this is an area in in the tampa bay area that you're going to want to check out it's absolutely stunning we have white sandy beaches and it is absolutely awesome number eight on this list is actually a community that's been on uh, TripAdvisor's best beach in america they have ranked there at least once it's been multiple times but this is not None other than St. Pete Beach. And St. Pete Beach is a beautiful area. It is an absolute destination. People come here from all over the world every single year. It's anchored uh, at the southern end of the peninsula there. You got the beautiful Don Cesar Hotel, which is this pink, gorgeous hotel. Um, it's almost like a monument. It's unbelievable, you know, and it, it you know, on the intercoastal side, it's sitting on Boca Siga Bay. It's just unbelievable. I've sat uh, in Gulfport before and watched dolphins jump up and down looking at the Don Cesar Hotel as the sun's setting. I mean, it's of course, it's just all the things you would expect it to be absolutely phenomenal. And to pick up a home down there though, you're gonna have to bring the bank, okay? It's $753,000 on average uh, to pick up a property down there. And y'all, I'm telling you right now, 753 grand is not gonna get you a whole lot of house. The least expensive property I saw there this year was a $350,000 one bedroom, 450 square foot condo. <laughs> so we're talking about averages, right? There are definitely estates down there that go for well into the tens of millions. So keep that in mind as well. The uh, It's up 29.4% year over year, and it has grown 92.4% in value over the last three. It is just cranking down in St. Pete Beach. All right, number seven on our list is Madeira Beach or Mad Beach as it's known. Uh, Madeira Beach is a great area, you know, a lot of commerce there there's restaurants and bars there's the uh, saltwater hippie really cool hangout spot you've got uh, two proper beaches there and then it, it directly connects to john's pass which is you know it's got this beautiful boardwalk there are restaurants and bars and shops and breweries and everything right there at your fingertips gorgeous stunning beaches with white sugary sand you've got access to the intercoastal waterway you can you know go down to st john's pass and rent boats or do the pedal pub there's so much to do down there and again being able to buy a home on the intercoastal waterway and i guess i should give a little bit of perspective for that when you get over to the gulf coast the thing that is very unique about the area is you've got an entire stretch of barrier islands and these barrier islands offer an intercoastal waterway between the barrier island and the peninsula and you know the communities here are are very different but it does give you a lot of access so whether you live on peninsula side you can have access to the intercoastal waterway you can have a you know a dock on that on your home or the intercoastal waterway offers that as well too. And you know, you can paddleboard, kayak, boating, you know, jet skiing, all the things there, or you can just walk directly across the street, you know, and go check out one of those beautiful Gulf sunsets that I was telling you about, or even go for a walk in the morning when the sun's rising. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal. There is so much to love about our beaches, but you know, to grab a home over there, we're talking about $827,000, and that is not a small expense. But you know, hey, if you're looking at those areas, there are many people who live over there and they are not shy about pulling the trigger you know 29 percent up year over year and over 92 percent over the last three which is just cranking down and this list is fun you know because obviously you know living in the area here i think i've shared with you guys before you know i'm local but i we were drawn here these you know, these Gulf Beach communities and Tampa and how live it was, it was part of the draw. And the thing I wanted to let you guys know, I know a lot of the times when I talk to people when they call us you know, and are considering making the move here, you know, they still have this mindset for whatever reason. Maybe somebody told them or, you know, old Florida used to be old Florida, but Tampa and Tampa Bay is not old. The average age in Tampa is 36 years of age. The average age in Pinellas County is 46 years of age. I'm 45, that's one year older. 
that's not old, right? So our cities are booming. Tampa is the unofficial tech hub of Florida. Over 25% of all the tech jobs reside here. It's very attractive to young professionals and it's absolutely booming and that's for good reasons. So I love it. And hey, speaking of which, if you are considering buying, selling, and relocating, do not hesitate to reach out to us. All of my contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar. So you could schedule a time that works best for you. I'd love to talk about Gulf Coast real estate or you know anything else in the Tampa the Bay Area we can help serve you with. But let's jump back into this list. We've got number six here. This is Reddington Shores. Reddington Shores is squeezed in between Madeira Beach and Clearwater Beach. Um, it is, again, white sugary sand beaches. You've got intercoastal access, another just gorgeous area um, that gives you all of the lifestyle. When you're thinking about that flip-flop Gulf Coast lifestyle, this is the area that you're you're starting to think about. And right now, you can grab a home for about $896,000, almost $897,000. It's up 26.5% year over year and 81.2% over the last three years, which is absolutely mind-blowing <laughs> so number five we're coming in on the home stretch here number five is indian rocks beach and if you guys have watched my channel at all you know that i am preferential to indian rocks beach this beach is the sole reason why we packed up our family and moved to the tampa bay area because we came here and we absolutely fell in love and it would not let us leave it planted a seed in our mind that we could not absolutely extinguish. And man, we had to get here anyway, you know, by hook or by crook. <laughs> and we made it down and it is, this community has served us so well. I've got videos on Indian Rocks Beach. You can check those out up here. We'll put them down in the description below as well. But this is my home beach. I live right over the intercoastal waterway in Largo proper, but Indian Rocks Beach is, is my beach. And man, we love it here. The first three months that we were here, I would go every Every single day to watch a sunset even if it rained i know you're like how are you watching a sunset if it rained it's florida there are partitions it's super weird we'll get into that later but yes we would go down and i just absolutely loved it one of the things that's really cool about Indian Rocks Beach is we don't let high rises on the beach. There are a couple, you know, they were voted in, but didn't go well and they don't do that. Um, you know, definitely not right now. So you can see as you're coming over the bridge, you've got a clear line of sight, you know, to the Gulf and it's just unbelievable y'all. And our community is stunning. We've got breweries and restaurants. It's a small community. We don't have a public parking structure. And where we are, the intercoastal waterway, Gulf Boulevard, um, that main thoroughfare narrows down to two lanes. So it feels really quaint. And by not having public parking, um, a big parking deck, I mean, there's public parking for the beach, which is unbelievable. But we don't have this big, huge influx in this draw. It does get busy during the season, but it's not as busy as a Clearwater or St. Pete Beach. It's very late back and you know obviously I'm waxing poetic but man this place just stole our heart and we fell in love with it but here's the thing I could move there right and right now it costs 915,000 to grab the average home in Indian Rocks Beach so maybe you can maybe you can't I don't know uh, it's up 29% year over year and it's grown 94 and a half percent over the last three which is awesome all right number four on the list is North Reddington Beach you're starting to get a theme here right again Gulf Coast, Pinellas County, or on the water. This is starting to make sense. Again, this is another one of those communities uh, that gives you a lot of access to the intercoastal waterway, owning a home on the intercoastal, being able to put a boat in, being able to walk across the street. Again, sunset, restaurants. I mean, it's just all about the lifestyle here and you cannot go wrong. I mean, the sunsets from these areas are absolutely to die for you're going to love them and even if you you know you don't live on these uh these areas the thing i want you to know is when you come over you know the intercoastal waterway to areas like seminole which is the supporting city which we've made videos on before largo which we've made uh, videos on before clearwater which we've made uh, videos on before these areas offer a lot more affordability they come more towards the average you know it's it's going to cost you somewhere between a uh, 400 and 650 thousand dollars on average for the median home right like a three bedroom 1800 square foot which is median for the area so you do have access to that and you can still find condos for you know 250 to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars too so i don't want to make it sound like it's crazy expensive and no one can afford to live here because that's just not true 
but today we're talking about the most expensive. So, you know, what does it cost to get into North Reddington? 918,000, uh, it's up 29% and up 85% over the last three as well. And now we've hit that top three. So this is exciting, y'all. Hey, if you know anybody who's looking to, to, to make the move or pick up a second home, share this video with them, let them know about this. Now let's get into it. Number three on this list is Terra Verde. This is a pretty cool community. It's at the southern tip of Pinellas County. Um, it is made up mostly of uh, condominiums and private residents. There are some stunning residents here. You know, it's you know, there's a series of keys down in Terra Verde that make it very unique. And it's at the southern tip, so it's uh, if you were to ever take the Skyway Bridge over to the Sarasota area, when you're coming up um, back north towards St. Petersburg, you're looking at Terra Verde. That's what you're seeing there, and it's just a gorgeous community here. Um, you want to get over here? It also costs nine hundred and eighteen thousand um, dollars to get over into this community as well. It's up 29.2% in a year and 87.5% over the last three. And these communities just continue to, to, their values just continue to increase. And it makes sense, right? When you think about it, you know, first of all, it's called Tampa Bay. So we're on the water. And, and if you zoom out even further, Florida is in the ocean, y'all. It's the one thing that I think people lose sight of. Florida is in the ocean. It's a peninsula in the ocean. And then Pinellas County, you know, in the Tampa Bay area, is a pen, is it a peninsula on a peninsula? <laughs> and we have all of these stunning views and the, and the Gulf Coast beaches. I mean, there's no wonder why people keep flocking here year after year. And so many people move to the area. It keeps growing like crazy. So let's get on to number two. Number two is Reddington Beach. Now we've talked about North Reddington Beach. We've talked about Reddington Shores. <laughs> now we're talking about Reddington Beach. And yes, they're all close to each other. And for perspective, it you know, you've got Clearwater, Bel Air Beach, Indian Rocks Beach, um, North Reddington, Reddington, and Reddington Shore. So you, like that's the way it works through the community there. But again, another area that gives you access, the ability to own a home, own a boat slip, put your boat in the water, be protected from the Gulf of Mexico because you're on a barrier island, give you access to walk across the street to the Gulf beaches. There are restaurants and shops and everything you need in these areas that give you access to just this incredible Gulf Coast lifestyle that most people imagine when they come down. Now to pick up a home here, we're talking about $986,000. Um, it's up 33% in one year and it is up 101% in the last three. <laughs> so this area is booming and you know it just makes sense y'all you know the one thing we know is god is not making more land right so you know these gulf coast communities are there's no new properties right like that's the thing that makes the real estate extremely valuable you're right on the water number one and you know in order to get something new you got to tear something old down so anytime somebody does that it just increases all of the values and just continue to see these values rise you know year after year time after time and it's because people they're living out their dream in these communities that's why they become so expensive right and that's what is the main draw to these areas you know whether it's tourist or someone who actually gets to make their dream a reality, they are bringing people in because people want the laid back lifestyle. They wanna live with flip flops. They wanna have sun on their face. They wanna feel sun kissed. They wanna smell that salty air. They wanna get out on their boat or they just wanna lay back on the beach, whatever it is. But man, that is why these properties continue to see this growth that they're seeing. So let's get on to the number one on our list. And without any further ado, drum roll please. Brrr. I know it's a really bad drum roll but the most expensive city in the Tampa Bay area to live is Bel Air Beach. Now, I've done an entire video on Bel Air. You can check that out here. Um, the entire city is about 1.92 miles. Uh, it's very exclusive. I'm gonna explain why here in a second. Um, it's got about 4,500 feet, which is just shy of eight tenths of a mile, I think. Don't correct, I'm, for you math guys out there, maybe you know exactly what that is, um, of Gulf Coast Beach. But here's what's interesting about it. It's an exclusive beach. Uh, there is no public beach in Bel Air. The Gulf Boulevard, which is the, um, the main uh, boulevard there that runs through there, uh, there is no commerce. There's no gas station, there's no, there's no bar, there's no restaurant, there is nothing where you can spend a dollar on Gulf Boulevard. It's all private residence. You have the, the intercoastal waterway, so you do have these homes that have the ability to have a boat slip, as I discussed before. And if you live in the community, there is one beach access where you can have parking. Actually, there's two. There's a park there as well, where you can go and park your vehicle and go on the beach if you have a permit. But that makes it very 
pretty unique. And the thing that, that I wanted to make mention of, remember I was telling you how it goes down to two lanes there. It's two lanes here as well um, because it's just north of Indian Rocks Beach. And the next beach north of that is Clearwater. Now, at the top of the intercoastal uh, waterway, those barrier islands right there, you've got Sand Key. So there's a public beach and there that's a Clearwater address and there's some hotels there, but everybody is going to Clearwater Beach because the beach south there is it's completely private. So they have to drive over the Clearwater Causeway and go up into Clearwater Beach if they want to go into beach, or they come down to Indian Rocks Beach, which is the next public beach. But as I've told you before, there's no public parking structure. So there's not an overwhelming amount of people that come there. So it makes this area pretty exclusive. Now, there is a uh, causeway, that a bridge that goes from uh, the uh, the barrier island over into Bel Air, and you've got you know Starbucks and restaurants and Publix, everything right there at your fingertips. And the community only being 1.92 miles in total gives you complete access to the area. But if you want to get on this exclusive barrier island and live in this community, it's going to cost you. One million dollars to make that happen. That's the average home price. And listen, y'all, there you can spend way more money than that. I'm giving you averages today. Trust me, we've got communities. There is a beautiful uh, home that just sold over there for eight point six million dollars. You know, the they're up thirty point four percent year over year and eighty six percent in the last three. And of course, people love coming to these communities. So. I love sharing this with you. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but these communities are stunning and people asked, you asked. So we wanted to deliver on this video. And as always, hey, if you want to see more videos like this, check them out here. We'll put all of the video links that we talked about today. And if you're considering making that move, buying, selling, or relocating to the Tampa Bay area, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.